Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. I don't think I've ever done a food video at Walmart before. That changes now because I hear there's a collection of Gordon Ramsay meals at the frozen food aisle here. Check this out. Fish and chips, lasagna, slow roasted beef, lemon caper chicken, macaroni and cheese, chicken pot pie, mushroom risotto. Guy Fiori has flavor town here and Andrew Zimmer has a turkey dinner and Swedish style meatballs. I thought it'd be like warm pasta or something. So I'm gonna get each one of Gordon Ramsay's meals and we'll go try them out. Before getting started, I just want to give a big thank you and shout out to the sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. If you are not utilizing a VPN service right now, I highly, highly recommend that you do. It's just so important. Surfshark VPN is probably the only app on my phone that I keep running in the background 24 hours a day. I never turn it off. It's super fast. I don't even know it's running, but it does give me a huge peace of mind. If you're not aware, there's tons of people out there trying to gain access to your personal information that's just floating around in cyberspace from data aggregate who are trying to collect your personal information to sell to marketing companies or people trying to access things like your email. So what a VPN is, is a virtual private network. And what Surfshark VPN does is that it protects and secures your personal information before it goes over the internet. So people who you don't want having access to your private info, they're not gonna have access to it. Also, Surfshark has something called Surfshark Alerts. So like I said, if someone trying to gain access to something like your email, you will be notified right away. That's why I keep it running in the background. It hides my personal information. And if you travel a lot, for example, when I'm overseas. I use Surfshark VPN to change my location to the US so I have continuous uninterrupted access to US websites like US streaming sites so I can keep up with the TV shows, the movies I'm watching, which otherwise you cannot access when you're overseas. And also just for basic tasks like paying your bills. A lot of times when you're trying to access US websites from overseas, sometimes they don't function correctly. Sometimes they don't load at all. So to even pay my bills, I use Surfshark VPN for that. Best thing about this is peace of mind for less than a cup of coffee a day. So if you want to give this a try, go to my link down below. Use my promo code Called Mikey Chen, you'll get 83% off your water plus three additional months for free, and you can try it out for 30 days. If you don't like it for any reason, get your money back. Again, I've never said this before, but I am so excited to have a Walmart food day. And all these celebrity frozen meals are made exclusively for Walmart, and I got seven Gordon Ramsay frozen meals. Then we're gonna travel to Flavortown for the exclusive Guy Fieri frozen meals. Sloppy Joe mac and cheese, sweet sour pork bowl, cheesy chicken enchilada bowl, and then going to Hawkins, Indiana for a Stranger Things pizza. I know this is weird, but when I was little, I never got a chance to go to Chuck E. Cheese, always wanted to. I think every one of my friends' birthday parties were at Chuck E. Cheese and I was never allowed to go. I got a Chuck E. Cheese pepperoni pizza. This is definitely enough food for today and tomorrow. Luckily it's raining outside, got nowhere to go. Let's eat some Walmart frozen foods. So many Gordon Ramsay options to choose from. Let's do the mushroom risotto. And all these are done in the microwave. Every one of them takes around five to six minutes. So inside each box, there's a little bowl. Directions are super simple. This one, heat, stir, heat. And as soon as you took the seal off, you smell that irresistible earthy aroma of the mushrooms. You can see the cheese in here as well. It's thick. This 100% passes the smell test. Mm. This is a pretty awesome bowl of risotto, especially coming from the microwave. It's rich, it's cheesy, it's creamy, and it's really, really earthy. Tons of mushrooms that you can see, you can taste. Personally, I love mushrooms. And with every bite, the aroma from the risotto just travels from my mouth up to my nose. The rice is nice and al dente. You taste that really nice nutty flavor from the Parmesan. If you serve this to me at a restaurant, I wouldn't be upset. This definitely does not taste like it just came out of a microwave. Great first course. Next up, four cheese macaroni. The four cheese macaroni. Inside there's mozzarella, fontina, parmesan, provolone, and on top you can see golden cornbread crumbs. Smells really good. That's pretty good. Of course, very creamy, rich, decadent, extremely cheesy. I really like the texture of the macaroni. Nice and al dente. A very nutty, a little tangy, and definitely sharp. I think the cornbread crumbs really doesn't add anything to this. They just kind of melt it inside. I found some little pieces just to try. I mean, it just tastes like mushy cheese, nothing else. I don't even think that's necessary. Overall, it does taste like very fancy, extremely, extremely cheesy mac and cheese. Not as good as the risotto, but 
Not bad. Next, lasagna with meat sauce. We got a good hefty serving of lasagna. So it's herb blend of ricotta, parmesan, and romano cheese all sitting inside bolognese sauce and mozzarella. Throughout my life, I've eaten a lot of frozen meals and a lot of those were frozen lasagnas. Garfield influence, this is definitely the best one. Mm. It's pretty darn good. Number one thing I noticed right away, the pasta is delicious. Fantastic texture. Usually frozen lasagna from a microwave. The pasta tastes like noodles that's been sitting there soaking up water for about 10 hours. Skim, this beautiful texture. You get that nice nutty flavor from the ricotta cheese. It's decadent, it's creamy, it's cheesy. The bolognese sauce really balances out the creamy cheese nicely. You get a nice sweetness and acidity from the tomatoes. You can definitely taste the meat and the nice flavor from the herbs. Favorite thing I've had so far today. I just put the fish and chips in the oven. That's gonna take about 22 minutes. In the meantime, lemon caper chicken. So this is a herb breadcrumb crusted chicken breast cutlet with seasoned potatoes, broccoli, florets, and the sauce is a white wine lemon caper sauce. You definitely smell the citrus from the lemon right away. I like it. Nice seasoning on the potatoes. Broccoli is just broccoli. The sauce is tremendous. Really, really citrusy. The chicken is tender. Of course, the breading on the outside, super soggy. But the cutlet is seasoned very well. I mean, this whole thing, the flavor is fantastic. The broccoli and the potatoes. It does a nice job balancing out the lemony sauce with the capers. I was gonna say, this is pretty healthy. So about 340 calories for this bowl and 21 grams of protein. I mean, there's a lot of sodium in here, but the flavor is delicious. Really not trying to suck up the Gordon Ramsay here, but everything I had so far, pretty darn good. Fish and chips just finished cooking. Fish and nuggets, nice and toasty on the outside. Nice and thick, traditional British chips. Mmm. Toasty on the outside, soft and pillowy on the inside. Chips are good. Fish, outside toasty, inside beautifully flaky. The breading is really thick and doughy. Fish is flaky, a little dry, especially with the thick breading on the outside, and I get it. This is a microwave frozen meal. The fish has a very, very apparent frozen texture. This meal is just okay for me. Let's try the chicken pot pie. This is really exciting. I love chicken pot pie. And this thing smells so delicious and comforting. Tiny pieces of chicken breast, there's peas, carrots, creamy sauce, and a very puffy, flaky crust. You could have cooked this one of two ways. You could have cooked it in the oven. That would have took about 45 minutes. I just popped it in the microwave. Mm. This is a magnificent chicken pot pie. Mm. Giant chunks of chicken, nice and tender. The gravy is rich, it's creamy. You get that nice sweet pop from the carrots and the peas. I mean, the chicken flavor is intense in this pot pie. Mm. The crust is buttery. Of course, it's not gonna be as flaky and crusty as if I cooked it in the oven, but it is buttery and delicious. Again, frozen pot pie is something I've had a lot of. This is by far the best one. I and mean, the flavor of this pot pie with that buttery crust, it just makes you feel so warm and happy inside. I wish I had another one so I could cook it in the oven and eat it for dinner. This is just the most perfect rainy day kind of dish. All right, my last Gordon Ramsay frozen meal, slow roasted beef and red wine sauce. Of all the Gordon Ramsay frozen meals I've had today, this one smells the best. It's slow roasted cuts of beef and savory red wine sauce, smoked bacon. There's carrots, mushrooms, pearl onions, and seasoned potatoes. And the chunks of beef, when I'm poking it with a fork, offers really no resistance. Mm. That's some absolutely dissolve in your mouth. Pieces of beef. The beef is good, the potato is good. 
the red wine sauce gives it such a rich, complex flavor profile and adds a lot of depth and subtle acidity to this dish. And the gravy is rich, it's thick, it's savory. It has this beautiful umami flavor with the onions, garlic, and herbs contributing to that beautiful aroma. This will be so good with some bread or steamed rice. I mean, it's not a lot of food, but it is an absolute flavor bomb. Love this. After trying out seven frozen Gordon Ramsay meals, I think this is my favorite. Also, love the pot pie, love the risotto. Lasagna was good. Only thing I didn't like, the fish and chips. And for dinner, we're gonna Flavor Town. A few moments later. Dinner time at Flavor Town. Let's start with the Sloppy Joe mac and cheese. Mac and cheese and Sloppy Joe. This is about as high school lunchroom as you can get. And Sloppy Joe is one of those things that you eat it so much in school, but after you leave, kind of miss it. Okay, after eating Gordon Ramsay's mac and cheese, this really doesn't hold up. First of all, it's very watery. And although I love the idea, two classic nostalgia inducing dishes, mac and cheese and Sloppy Joe, together, never thought about that before. You can't really taste the Sloppy Joe. You can taste a bit of the meat. For $6, this doesn't have a lot of. The noodles, the pasta has an okay chew, but not a great one. To me, this almost tastes like a soupy wet lasagna. Then it does a sloppy Joe mac and cheese. But for $6, it tastes okay. Gordon Ramsay's meal is about five bucks. And that tastes way more flavor townish than this. So it's shredded pork and I see a lot of fat, a lot of good pork fat. There's pineapples, there's sweet and sour sauce. Oh, this is just horrible. I guess the only pro about this meal is the fatty pork. I mean, there's some nice chunks of melty fat in here that just melts in your mouth. Unfortunately, this whole thing is just sweet. There's no really savoriness to it. There's no depth to it. It just tastes like a lot of shredded pork, heavy on the pepper, just drenched in this sweet and sour sauce. It's really one dimensional. I mean, the texture of the pork is not bad. It's pretty tender, some pieces anyway. That was a dry piece, but very peppery. Beyond that in the sauce, no flavor at all. I mean, I wouldn't really call this flavor town, more like bland village. Again, $6 frozen dinner. I read it off for a hungry man. It doesn't really make me too excited for the next one. Cheesy chicken enchilada bowl. Let's see if it gets better. So inside this bowl, there's pulled chicken, crunchy tortilla strips on top and a melty cheese. This actually looks, smells great. This is definitely the best out of the three things I tried from Guy Fieri. Very cheesy, nice tender chunks of chicken, spicy and smoky. Finally, something that tastes like it belongs in Flavor Town. Only bad thing about this, the tortilla chips gets a little stale, it's not crispy anymore. Other than that, cheesy, meaty, a ton of flavor. This is nice. Mm and a ton of chicken as well. It's a really tasty dish. I'm gonna finish all the microwave meals for dinner and tomorrow we'll get into the pizzas. I'm gonna show you my favorite frozen pizza of all time. See you tomorrow. The next day. Hey, good morning. Pizza for breakfast starting out with Chuck E. Cheese. It pretty much tastes like a childhood birthday party in a slice. I mean, if you think about what a frozen pizza should taste like, it would be this. Crust is toasty, soft, chewy, sauce, a little sweet, a little tangy, not too herby. Goes pretty well with the melty cheese. It's pretty much a pizza that really doesn't take itself very seriously. It's not good, it's not bad. Definitely tastes like something I would appreciate more as a kid. Like I was saying before, pretty much every single birthday invite was to Chuck E. Cheese when I was a kid. But when I first got to the US, our family didn't have a car that, that worked very well. So I could never go. I always wanted what a Chuck E. Cheese pizza tastes like. Now I know. This next one I'm really excited about. Stranger Things Pineapple Jalapeno Pizza. This is definitely the strangest of the Stranger Things pizza collection. There's regular pizza like pepperoni, but pineapple and jalapeno. Never had something like this before. I do love pineapple on pizza, but usually with some meat so you get that nice sweet and savoriness. This definitely looks almost like a cartoon pizza. The crust is pretty thick and the cheese doesn't look very stretchy. They do give you a lot of toppings on this. One bite of this. I think I missed my Chuck E. Cheese pizza. The crust is thick. 
The crust is thick and pretty airy. That's definitely the best part about this pizza. The sauce more sweet than tangy. Overall, not much flavor on this pizza. It tastes like it needs salt or some sort of dipping sauce or something. Maybe the pepperoni one would have been a lot better, especially because I know they say it's mild jalapenos on the box. This just tastes like bell peppers. So it's no heat whatsoever. The jalapenos really add nothing to this pizza. Yeah, I think the Chuck E. Cheese pizza, way better. Really good crust though. All right, the next pizza I'm gonna show you guys is not exclusively from Walmart, but it is my favorite frozen pizza, I think of all time. It's from the Motor City Pizza Company. If you never tried this before, this is absolutely phenomenal. This tastes better than most pizza I've had at restaurants. And I got the three meats flavor, let me show you. This is a Detroit style deep dish pizza with the most airy crust caramelized on the sides. Beautiful gooey melty cheese. Mm. This thing tastes like it just came from a restaurant. The crust is thick, but it absolutely melts in your mouth. Pepperoni toasty on the outside, nice and spicy. Sitting on top of the gooey, melty cheese, the crust is absolutely phenomenal. Like I said, melts in your mouth. The most airy crust on a frozen pizza. And the edge crust are my favorite with that beautiful caramelized sear. And this thing sells at Walmart for about $7.80. So about a dollar more than the Stranger Things jalapenos pizza. And this is absolutely restaurant quality stuff. Mm. What I do is, I wait for this to go on sale, and I'll stock my fridge up with like 20 of these for about $5 each. Best frozen pizza, in my opinion, ever. Wow, I just spent the last 24 hours eating food from Walmart. That was a lot of fun trying out the Gordon Ramsay frozen meals, the Guy Fieri ones. I really want to try out the Andrew Zimmer ones too. There's actually a lot of cool, interesting food items at Walmart. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.